Hey guys, it's Alexei from Ace5 Studios, and today we're going to be talking about coordinates, axis, nulls, etc. Sometimes you'll notice when you have an animation of an object and you parent it into another object, the animation moves to a different place. So I'm going to try to explain what happens and how you can avoid it and how you can in general use this to your advantage or you know in your projects. So we have this cube, let's say at frame zero, let's keyframe it. And let's go to frame 20 and let's move them across to 1000 and keyframe it. Now, so you can see that, uh, it, the points that matter is where the axis is. The axis is these three arrows. And you can see that uh, that's the stuff in the middle. If, for example, we, let's make this cube editable and let's move the axis to this edge here. And let's turn off all these rotations. Now, if we, now you'll see the cube is moving actually from that edge. See, the axis stays where it was keyframed, but the geometry inside the axis has moved. It's kind of like if you grab the points in the cube, you can move the points. Oops, the points. You can move some of them up. But when you look at the animation, if you go back to you know, model tool, you'll see that the axis is what's moving. So these axes are really important when you're animating. Because if let's say we have a sphere somewhere else, like over here, and let's say this is like, it's got some objects in it, it's like some character, and they're all inside here. And then you realize you want this cube to follow with the sphere. So when the sphere rotates, you want the cube to rotate as well. And let's just put the cube into there. And now you see the blue curve, which shows where the object has already moved. And if you move the timeline, the cube snaps up there, which is, you know, you want to keep the cube there where it was before. That's because now it's looking one object up and it's looking uh, where the coordinate plane is. And the coordinate plane for this object starts where its axis is. So to make this more obvious, um, let's get our cube back up here. And this here is my, I modeled this to show you, is a plane. So if we put the cube into this plane, you will see now it's animating where it was before. Well, if we rotate this plane, and every object that you have has this plane, it's just you can't see it inside it. So if we rotate it now, and we can move it over here, the cube is now animating in that plane. So it, when you get an object, like every object has this orientation plane in it. So when you move that object around, you're adjusting where this stuff happens. So let's say, get this cube, and let's say in the middle, we want them to go up a bit, and then we keyframe that. Now, if we take the cube out of this object and we just put it back into the normal plane, you'll see the path snaps back to where to the middle. So the keyframes that are on an object, like, you know, here, where is it? Um, attributes, coordinates. These keyframes look at whatever the parent of the object is. If there's no parent, it just uses the world 000. But if it has a parent, it'll use these coordinates from wherever the parent is. So let's say if we have this orientation, Let's make another one over here. Now when we put the cube into this one, you'll see it animates in that axis because that's where it is. And if you put it into this one, it'll animate from this zero. So it always looks at where the zero is above it. So I think that kind of covers this point. That's what, why when you move something and you offset it, you get this weird jump. If you want to prevent the jump, Let's say we get this cube here, and we want this cube to be parented to this axis, but we still want it to be here initially until this object moves. Well, the way to do that is you have to make a null, so, and you have to make sure the null is where the cube is. So you put it in there, and you go reset PSR, and you make sure all these are zero. There's a command, press Shift C, reset PSR, this command here, works when you have something selected, obviously. There you go. Um, I have it mapped to tilde x. I use it all the time. It's a really important command. And now you take it out. And you now what you want to do is you want to put this cube into this null. So this null doesn't have any keyframes on it. So when you, when you put this null into the orientation, it doesn't jump because now the null you see has a bunch of different, has a totally different position. It's not zero, zero, zero anymore. Even though it's world zero, 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 relative to the object that it's in, it's in a different place. It's you got this rotation, which is the offset that, you know, if you would have moved it from this zero to here, 
that's how much you would have had to offset it. And now, as you can see, the cube is still using its parent's coordinates. So it's still animating the right place. But when you animate this guy over, see, he will move with it and still animate relative to that axis that was there. So that's what I wanted to show you, um, how to offset things and how these, axis, now the, how these axes work. Now, the last important thing that I want to show you, let's grab this guy out of here. Let's move this guy back to the building. Uh, there is two ways to scale your objects. And the model tool just scales the points and geometry in objects. So if you get this cube and you use the scale tool, it'll scale from the axis origin and it'll scale the points down. But it'll still move the same distance. It's still moving the same thousand points. It doesn't really change that. But there is also this thing called uh, object scale. This object scale actually changes the scale here in these places. And what happens is if when you scale this, so let's scale this axis here. Let's scale it down. No, wait. Let's put the cube inside this orientation axis. And let's scale this orientation axis down so that here is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And now you see the animation only goes to here. It doesn't go all the way to the thousand point. Even though on the cube here, it still says that it went 1,000 centimeters. Even though the world position for 1,000, if you put this cube to 1,000, where is 1,000? You see this over here. Because this cube in here is using a different scale. This cube here is using the scale from the object above it. So in this case, this parenting arch. If we pull this null out and then we play it, Uh, because this, you see, when you scale it, this scale, if you pull the cube out, not just the null, because you want keyframe stuff, because this has keyframes on the scale. Now, you'll see that it's again going from 0 to 1,000. And then you put it back into the orientation null, and you'll see that it shrinks, and it goes down to that, because it's using a different size. Like, you're scaling the whole, you know, the whole uh, coordinate map down to uh, a different scale. So when you're animating characters and you want to scale the whole animation down, you have to use this object tool on a null where the character lives, like or whatever, where your animated object lives. Because if you just scale the geometry down, it won't actually change the way your character, you know, the everything proportionally. So yeah, you want to change the whole kind of world around it. And this is the world. So if we rotate this guy now, you know, he'll be, he'll keep doing the same thing, just in a different kind of plane, in a different orientation. And when we scale it, that's the same thing that happens. I think it's a very important concept to understand. I hope I explained it correctly. If you don't get something, just ask and I'll try and clarify it for you. But there you go. This was Alexei from Ace5 Studios. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you.